Hello, how you doing? Mike Bradley here. Hope you're doing well as always. It's another Wednesday, so it's another Q&A Wednesday with me, your host, Michael Bradley. <laughs> First question. Hi, Mike. Hello, mate. Uh, love your vids. Can you tell me about the, knob, the knobs features, coil tap stuff on the Les Paul? I have to choose between a Les Paul and a Stratocaster. So basically, not all Les Pauls have it. Um, it's a mod. No, you can all do it if you want. You can do a little modification, take it to a local tech. Um, I haven't done it on my Les Paul, but it's, it's handy if you do. And it basically just splits the coils. So obviously, Les Pauls have humbuckers, and um, if you usually on the, the last tone uh, knob, you can pull it up, and then it will split or whatever pickup it's wired to. So if it's the, no, hopefully it's both you got, you know. If so, I imagine both tone knobs will split, uh, pull up. Um, but it will just split it, and you get more of a single, um, single coil stratty kind of sound um, like Peter Green because he was out of phase and that kind of almost had that kind of stratty kind of sound as well when he was in the middle position both pickups on uh, but the Jimmy Page Les Paul um, and his obviously main Les Paul he has he has that you know so um, live he gets some kind of slightly um, thinner sounds you know like a strat so it's a cool thing to do uh, if you have to choose between a Les Paul and a strat Depends what you're into, man. Um, but yeah, if you get Les Paul, by all means, try to, if you want no single coil sounds, you only can have one guitar, yeah, do the little modification so you can split the coils. Jonathan Moyer. Maybe explain how you go about composing a song, the music part of it. Like, do you start with a chord progression and go from there, adding the related chords to it? Great question, man. I, I have got a, um, a video I did quite a while back now, I think a good couple of years ago, on how to write songs. I'll put a link in the description box actually for you. Do check that out. But um, how I write songs um, varies, to be honest with you. It really, really varies. Um, where's my plectrum? It's underneath the MacBook. Um, so sometimes, um, you know, you could have a riff, or, or you've asked me, so I could have a little chord progression or a riff or something like that. Um, and just kind of be playing, like for example, my song The Devil's On My Side, uh, which is available on iTunes. Um, I was just playing with that, that. I just picked up the acoustic one day and I just started mucking around with that. I'm out of tune, one second. I'm back in tune. Um, so yeah, I kind of had that idea. And then I started hearing the bass notes, boom, boom. And I started, you notes, know, kept that main, da 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 but changing the bass notes. And then the rest kind of just started adding to itself. Um, that kind of descending bass line. That kind of idea happening. Um, so there's one, I had a little idea on the acoustic and just kind of built the song from there. Um, there's been times when I've been in the car in a traffic jam and I, a melody in my head comes and I get my phone and just record it into the little voice memo and the song Faded Away, which I've got an acoustic version of this on my channel as well. Check it out, I'll put a link in the description box below. Um, that was the same. I remember I was like, da 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 And I just started saying random words. Da 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 I just had this melody in my head and then recorded it and then it turned out I was humming in the key of D flat C sharp and so I made sure I wrote the song in that
job for me Every time you look up for more I bet you're looking out for me I want you to be in the eyes tonight And you'll see that your light has slowly faded away Be the wind shining, shooting a star If you know it ain't true, it ain't what you wish for You know, so I had the melody, recorded it figured out the chords from that, you know. So, um, yeah, hope that helps, you know. It's just starting, you know. You know get some chords, you know, get your harmonised major scale down. Um, and like I say, check out my How to Write Songs video I did about two or three years ago. Um, you know, so say you got the chord, I don't know, C, and an F, A minor, and a G, all right? Thousands of songs. One chord progression, or you could. Or you could put some distortion on, make it a bit more. C, F, A minor, G, you know, so um, this is all off the top of my head, but my head is nuts. But I hope that helps, mate. Mr. Sparkaroo, <laughs> uh, he's put, hi Mike, not sure where to put the questions. Well, you put it and I've seen it, so you'd be fine. So I was wondering, what do you consider would bridge the gap between a beginner and an intermediate guitar player? What skills, technique, music theory, knowledge, etc.? Um, I would say to know all your open chords, to know all your bar chords and to be able to play a, a chord progression um, in time with groove, I would say, you know, with feel, would I would class as an intermediate player, you know. Yeah, of course, knowing your pentatonics and be able to, you know, know all five positions and be able to, you know, go freely between them. I think about playing fast, but, you know, if you've got, I don't know, say E major, right? Pentatonic. Um, so yeah, if you can, um, but yeah, definitely, you know, um, sorry if my guitar keeps going out of tune by the way, it's so hot today and <laughs> nothing's staying in tune very well. But yeah, if you've got, no, say a G, no, just an open G chord. Just about to sit on that and have a groove to it, not. You know, just sit there. G to C. And of course, know the names. You know, you're about to play B minor, for example, in more than just one position. You know, if you're playing B minor, well, say you're in a band with another guitar player, he's playing B minor here. You don't want to be doing the same thing. You know, so you can do a B minor here. So that I would say would give you a grasp of you no know, beginner to intermediate, you know, and then from there it's just getting it sounding super tan and really good. But um, but yeah, keep playing, man. You'll get there. Question from Lucas. Every time I pick up my strap, I feel like I'm constantly playing the same licks and I can't get out of it. I want to get into more improv playing, but feel like I've hit a wall completely. I'm trying to be more melodic and expressive in my playing, but I just can't figure it out. For example, John Prashante, Dave Gilmore. I get this question a lot, um, and yeah, so you're not alone, Lucas, whatsoever. First thing, you're saying you feel like you're playing the same licks all the time. Stop playing licks. I say it all the time, you know, don't play licks, you know. Yeah, we all have our kind of bag of tricks we do and our kind of stock phrases, as Eric Clapton called it once. 
Um, but if you just play licks, I, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but if you play licks all the time, man, you're gonna sound like you're playing licks, all right? So don't. So restrict yourself, you know? So be melodic on, say, one string. Let's say the second string, and we'll do this in E major like I did. Actually, let's do E minor, let's be dark. Um, so. <laughs> two strings, all right? So, um... Thing I've played in my life, but you get the idea, alright? So, uh, and then try, um, you know, hum something and get out on the guitar. So, um, so I'm here, so similar stuff I was doing earlier. That's in my head now, but. Which you find hard, so say, I don't know, um, what would be a lick? I don't know, um, something like that. Look at those notes, they're the same notes there. So take those same notes. elsewhere on the guitar. And it kind of makes you think different. Oh. You can still bend that. Go bend to your first finger. Or you know, you've got this flat five here. Changed it up a little bit there. So I hope that helps, you know. So just you can take your licks and just look at the notes in them and try and put them somewhere else on the guitar. Go. 
hopefully that's helped me. William Griffiths asks, what type of lighting on a budget would you recommend to a bar band? God, it's been a long time since I've done that. Um, on a budget, you didn't really say what your budget is. But, um, William Griffiths, are you from England? Because uh, Maplins, they sell lights. Um, but yeah, I would just, um, you don't want to cut corners too much, I think. Because um, if you're playing, a, you know, if you're doing a pub band and you get, say, hired to an event or something like that, and you turn up and you've got a couple of, like, little spinning lights or something like that, <laughs> they'll be like, oh, what the hell is this, you know? So it, you pay for what you get, you know what I mean? And so lighting and a PA are very, very important. Um, so I would say spend as much as you can on the best you can get. You know, um, try not to cut corners too much because you're only gonna, you don't know, you'll get them and you'll be like, oh, we need to get some new lights. No, when we can, we'll get some better lights. You know, just try and get that, the better lights right at the beginning. So it's done, you've got it, don't have to worry about it. I've just always come from, I'm a saver, I'm quite good with like saving money and stuff. So, you know, um, yeah, like I say, you pay for what you get. So try not to cut corners and um, get the best lighting you can get, you know. Um, yeah, don't just get a couple of the little red, yellow ones, you know. Ideally, if you can get the ones when you play the kick drum and then, you know, the lights change, at least go for one of those, you know. Um, at least that gives a little bit of uh, panaz to it, all right? But, uh, yeah, keep you posted, man. All right, last question today from Foof. <laughs> hey, I'm looking to get a new guitar to play more of a grungy style of music like Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins and Pearl Jam. What guitar do you think I should be looking at? I was thinking of a Jazzmaster or Jaguar with humbuckers or a Les Paul, but I'm not sure. Either of those, you know what I mean? Like, you know, play play what feels good for you, you know? Smashing Pumpkins, he used a strap, you know, but Kurt uh, Cobain used a Jazzmaster and a Jaguar and things like that. Uh, Jag Stag, I think that's what he invented. So play what is, um, what feels good to you. You know, Pearl Jam used Les Pauls, but they also used strats. Um, yeah, so go to a guitar shop and just pick up a guitar, pick up a couple of different ones, a few different ones, and just whatever songs you've got, start playing them on the guitar. Does this feel right to me? Is this guitar talking to me? Because, you know, I, I do strongly believe that um, you don't pick a guitar, the guitar chooses you, you know. So uh, it sounds, yo, hippie man, but it's so true, all right? So, um, yeah, just go to your guitar shop and just try that out, and then... If it's a Jag, go for a Jag. If it ends up being a PRS, get a PRS. You know, like, just, um, yeah, play what feels right for you, man. But you you can't go wrong with those type of, you can't go wrong with a Strat or a Les Paul. Done deal, you know. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. And for those who asked a question, hopefully that's helped. And uh, if you would like to ask a question, please head over to my Facebook page and give it a good old like if you haven't done so already and drop me a question there and I will very do my very best, I will very do my very best, I will do my very best to get back to you as best I can. Anyway, Mike Bradley, Petron down. Double salute, sign out.